Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Amiket and what will happen with the prices. As of this recording, I still have one more pre-release to go to at 1 p.m. This is the highest price that Amiket cards will be at. So if you can trade them away, trade them away. If you want them, just wait. They will get a lot cheaper. Most of these cards will drop. They've already dropped anywhere between 40 to 70%, but they have another at least 25% to drop. And I know this because I look at the paper value of Amarquette, which is at $291 today, and you can compare it to the last set, and then you can compare it to Caldes, which is one of the strongest sets, in my opinion. Caldes was a set that, I mean, it was a very, very strong set in terms of what cards dominate standard. Now, when we talk about the paper value, a typical set's paper value will be around $200, A for Revolt, while a very good set is only $145, and surprisingly, it only has two cards over $10, Heart of Kinrin and Walking Ballista. So these two cards, one of them being a rare really helps the set value. Now, is Amarquette as good as A for Revolt? If you don't believe so, then you're expecting the price to be below $145. If you do believe that the arrow are the same power level, well, Amarquette is at $300, A for Revolt is at $145. So therefore, you're looking at another huge, huge decrease in price. Now, if you can trade these cards away at pre-release, trade them away. If you can trade Lily away, you trade Liliana away. And that is this is the highest point that you can get for most of these. 95% of these cards in trade are in buy list. If you wanted to sell it to your store, I'm sure your store is clever enough to know what's going on at that point. So Caldas, if you believe it's a very powerful set, you're still looking at 187. Let's just round for 190. Amaket is at 300. Kaladash, which I believe is a very strong set, is at 190. There's a $110 difference at the best case scenario, right? If you believe it's not a strong set, like the previous set at 150, then there is half. There, you're going to lose half the value. And we have already seen this from many of the cards, but there is another 50% drop that will hit the set. So anywhere between a 50%, or let's say anywhere between a 30% and 50% is what you can expect to lose on the majority of these cards. And they're, they're not bad cards. I mean, when you look at the Heart of Kinrin, you look at the Walking Ballista, you look at the Chandra, None of them, especially the new Gideon, how can this new Gideon be worth more than the old Gideon? It just cannot. Um, the new Gideon's at 28, the old Gideon's 18. There's a $10 difference, although the old Gideon, maybe you could say, hmm, the new Gideon I can play more because it's newer, but that's the only benefit I can see between those two cards. The Gideon Ally of Zen card is by far the stronger of the two. And it's been in every single GP since it came out, uh, top eight. So when you talk about cards, the cards that are absolutely going to get slaughtered are the EDH cards. And the EDH cards are in the unfortunate position that they are hyped so much by the community only to fall over and over and over again. Now, all the cards, most of the cards will go down in price, but the EDH ones will take the most hit because that is what people are trading in. That is what people are buy listing to get the cards they need to actually play in standard. So let me tell you a story involving Puka Trade and what they wanted me to do. So out of the blue, they contacted me. The guy contacted me. I have all the emails. I think the emails are actually posted on a video on this channel somewhere. And he wanted me to make a video about pre-release and how you should use PicoTrade to trade your pre-release cards or to trade 
mainly to trade for pre-release cards. I found this really distasteful. Uh, obviously, I pick a trade in general is a it's not a Ponzi scheme, it's not a pyramid scheme, but it has a issue if there's not enough people, new people, new blood trading cards into it, then you have a system where it's very hard to get out of because you have an imaginary currency which previously you couldn't trade it for stuff. Now you can trade it for really expensive playmats and really expensive sleeves. But beyond that, they did some shady stuff with the, what was it, GoFundMe or the kick, whatever they were doing to collect the money for the so-called developer who was going to develop the new platform. I've always found that kind of funny where they make, they make money. Don't believe that those four people don't make money, right? They listed themselves an angels list. It is cl quite clear that they are financially savvy and understand how to make money. Otherwise, they wouldn't do this, right? And it's quite clear that they understand how to raise money, right? They raised $80,000 from non-returnable Kickstarter or GoFundMe money. But beyond that, that's the type of advice that they wanted me to give you was, hey guys, do you want to trade for these cards really early? Okay, well, you can go on Pico Trade and get these cards for great values. And I was like, wow, that would make me look like an idiot, right? <laughs> no, no, you do not want to trade for these cards. You want to trade away these cards. Now, let me address the other issue of um, people and why this set, in my opinion, is weaker than previous sets. When I'm saying previous sets, I think Caldas was a good set in terms of strength. This set seems slow, but not in a good way, not in a control way. It just seems like they made the aggro decks a little slower than they had to be, and the mid range a little a little slower, but not as powerful as they have been in the past. When we talk about Bant Coco as your mid range deck, yeah, that was a very good deck. I can look at it and I can say, oh yeah, Coco is a good card, and yeah, this will be a very strong deck. Overall, though, it is kind of amusing to me where the true value of this set will fall in place soon enough. It's not $300. No set in the modern standard is $300. The two most recent sets, you have Aether Revolt, which, you know, I think it's just about the same power level at $150. And you have, uh, if you were to buy a single of each one, it would be $150. And then you have the Kaladas at hundred ninety and Caldas in my opinion is a very strong first set. So where is this? Is this really a hundred and ten dollars better than Caldas, which comes out to be thirty five percent better? Is this set on a whole thirty five percent better than Caldas? And the answer I would say is no. Therefore it has thirty five to fifty percent left to drop as a set on you know as an entire set. So anyway those are my personal feelings. Um, that is some of what I go off of. And sometimes I don't make stuff up. Sometimes I look at the data and say, huh. You know, I, I think this set is the same as A4 Revolt in terms of money cards, but much, much weaker than uh, Kaladas. And Kaladas being at 190 and this being at 300, I would be extremely worried if I had too many of these cards at this time or if I was trading for cards because it's not going to hold. It's just not going to hold. I mean, are, are you saying that this set is 35% as a whole, the individual cards when compared one by one is 35% better than Caladas? No way. I would, and, and I would say Caladas would be much better than this set. But then, then again, it's my personal opinion. So leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.